Black Swan, The Twelve Lessons of Abandonment Recovery by Susan Anderson. Lesson six, you're doing great. By the way, just wanted to let you know, if you're really doing this with me, you are doing amazing. Let's continue with our story for this lesson. The little girl is inspired to find good things. She goes through the next week of walking into places she has not been before. One day, she appears in the gymnasium. You have finally decided to join us, the teacher says. She bows her head. The other children are playing with the ball. It bounces hard against the wall. She hears the children shouting and holds her hands over her ears as she retreats to the doorframe. She says her name within herself to drown out the sounds. She knows she hates the sound of the ball and the, cha- and the shouting children. She knows that she loves the meadow and the water and the sun and the warm smell of the woman and the soft pastel colors of her skirts and her beautiful black swan. Soon, the noises of the game blend into the background and she thinks good thoughts. When the whistle blows, the little girl takes her place in line for the first time with the other children. They do not shout at her or taunt her, but let her march all the way back with them to the old stone building, chests up, faces lifted to the breezes. Throughout the weeks, she waits for her chance to tell the swan of her adventures in the gymnasium in other places. He commends her for her courage. But I'm still sad and miserable, complains the little girl to the swan. I miss mommy and daddy all the time, she sighs. I have good feelings sometimes, but I can't really play. Nothing feels good. Something is wrong with me. It is good that you are finding new things, and as you do, you will come across the sadness that is blocking your life. It is very real. You are facing the loss you have been through, and that is a good thing, says the swan. The little girl feels the woman's skirts while gently against her. But it's not good. It hurts too much, cries the girl. It is hard to go through the pain of loss, says the swan. It is a great pain. A painful part of living and loving. Many people have to go through it. But it makes me feel so bad and I can't do anything. The pain of loss is pulling you out of the moment, Amanda. It pulls hard like quicksand. Its pulls bring powerful pain. The little girl cries, letting her tears fall onto the woman's skirts. It won't go away. The pain of loss feels helpless because it comes from the past, and the past is a place where we have no power. We can't do anything about the past because it is already over. It no longer exists for us to control. But I don't want to live without my family, cries the little girl. Loss is very painful until we cross over. We must cross over from the past to the present, from what we had to what we have. But I miss my mommy and my daddy, and I always will. Yours is a difficult loss to face, Amanda. A difficult reality can only be faced in the sheerest moment. It's too big a job to be done once and for all. That's why the moment is such a special place. But I want Daddy to come back and get me. Wanting and wishing will not bring him back. You can accept this reality or fight it, Amanda. But fighting it keeps you from the pain. Fighting it keeps you in a powerless place filled with sadness. Your moment of life is now. But it is easy for you. You are not afraid, counters the little girl. I have a lot of fears too, Amanda, says the swan, turning in the water. I must face an uncertain future within unfamiliar waters. I know I will never see my home again, and that I may have to die alone without a mate. I must use all of my will to cross over into my present life and accept its realities, especially the reality of my aloneness and my strangeness amongst the others. But once I do this, I am filled with the power of existence, able to go on. The little girl closes her eyes and draws in her breath. That's right, Amanda. Take a deep breath and belong to the reality of now. She lets her breath out slowly and evenly. I am alone. She sighs, but I don't want to be. It may not be the reality you want, but it is the reality you have 
at least for the moment. If aloneness is the reality facing you, you must face it back. It hurts, whimpers the little girl. Yes, says the swan. Pain is when the future and the past overlap and squeeze out the present. You must carve out a path between them. You must find the moment. Get into its groove, Amanda, and fill yourself with the life all around you. The little girl takes another deep breath and gazes out across the water, watching her beautiful swan make a full turn and lets her breath out slowly. That's right, Amanda. Breathe in the present and breathe out the past. This is what you must practice. Open your ears and eyes and skin to the sounds of people who are all around you. Open your gills and breathe them in. Allow other people to fully enter the moment with you, says the swan turning in the water, as you have entered mine. He streams through the flock of white swans on his way out to the horizon.